the uniting of Greek, Roman, and Christian cultures gave rise to some of the world's greatest achievements in art and architecture. During the Byzantine period, crosses were worn for the first time as symbols of devotion to Christ the Savior. These astonishing 1,500-year-old bronze crosses are genuine artifacts of Byzantium and have been unearthed in archaeological digs and discovered in shipwreck dives of the ancient Holy Land. Each authentic Byzantine period cross is sold with a certificate of authenticity, establishing the cross's unique place in history. These genuine, unaltered artifacts are mounted in sterling silver and 18 karat gold by internationally renowned designers. This is a rare opportunity to own a beautiful and symbolic piece of history. Bob, you're looking great, really are. You're looking terrific. Gotta hand it to him. Still having sex at 64. Trouble is, he lives at 62. <laughs> I never used to believe in miracles. I think what changes it for you is when you see your first newborn baby. Because what it is, it's the hands. It's the fantastic detail in the hands. Right the way down to the knuckle, the nail, the quick in the nail. It's all there in perfect miniature. And as the man handed me this thing, I thought, now that is a miracle. Because I'd ordered a pizza. Okay, how many do you think I can do? Twenty. I can do twenty easy. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty! I mean, who hitchhikes with a fridge? I mean, honestly. <laughs> Indeed. Thanks, Tony. We never tire of hearing that story. Now it's time on Tea Time with Trevor for our team captain, Tony, to reveal all. What's it to be, Tony? Flip or flop? And remember, it's a brave man who flips. I'm going to flip. He's going to flip, folks. It's a pair of trousers. I don't believe it! It is a pair of trousers. <laughs> Darling, mwah, mwah. Love the show yesterday. Boy, was that funny. 
trousers. <laughs> I genuinely laughed. So, here we are. How's Jenny? Well, we split up four months ago. Oh, so you did. Shame I liked her. Now, some good news. It's in the cupboard. What? The cupboard. What are you talking about? Uh, just a minute, Tony. I'm on the phone. With the others. It's this new um, headset thingy. I, I raise my arm like this when I'm on the phone so people know. Now, some good news. I reckon I can get you on the bill to do the Princess Trust Royal Gala Saturday week. Live in front of royalty. Stephen Kay's had to pull out, and the producers will use you, provided you do new material. That won't be a problem, will it? Hmm, thought as much. Send in Dean Masterson. Who? Dean Masterson. Brilliant comedy writer. Look, I can write my own routines. Can you? Can you really? By Saturday week? Tony, you used to be able to write funny stuff. But now you're... Well, you need Dean Masterson. Are you saying that I've lost it? No, no, I'm saying it's hard work. You need to go back to what you used to do. Uh, write about your ex-girlfriends. Write about what you see in the park. I'm just not sure you've got the desire anymore. Sandra, you're wrong about me. Then prove me wrong. No, not the cupboard by the window! about being friends of Parks. No. Parks. Um, I love Parks. No. No. Last week I had my ex-girlfriend... No. Last week I had my front window smashed in. Last week I had my window smashed in by my ex-girlfriend, who lives just a stone's throw away. Parks are good. I like the way they have friends of Parks. A while ago, I made friends with Hyde Park. Trouble is, we've fallen out recently. It can't stand the fact that I walk through St James's Park and it thinks I'm seeing a recreation ground on the side. Tonight's a big night, eh? How are you feeling? Well, I'm ready. I've done the work and I'm ready. How about you? Oh, not so good. Daniel's running a bit of a temperature. Which means we won't be able to come and see the Royal Gala. Well, why not? Well, Tony, I can't just leave him. Not like that with a babysitter. Can't you? Well, no. Well, come by yourself. Let Nicola look after him. Nah, it doesn't really work like that, mate, I'm afraid. But look, we'll watch it on the telly later on. Anyway, look, I'd better take this on upstairs. Your two minutes call. Okay, Tony, stay focused. Enjoy yourself out there. Trust your material. Are you okay, darling? God, you look terrible. Everyone is so excited. This is what we've been waiting for. The new Tony. Your Royal Highness, my lords. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a stalwart of tea time with Trevor. Mr. Tony Hawks. Come on, love. Tony's on. Good evening. Uh, last week I had my front windows smashed in by my ex-girlfriend. Uh, parks. Parks are good. I never used to believe in miracles. I, I think what changes it for you is when you see your first newborn baby. Because what it is, it's the hands. It's the fantastic detail in the hands, right the way down to the knuckle, the nail, the quick in the nail. It's all there in perfect miniature. And as the man handed me this thing, I thought, now that is a miracle. Because I'd ordered a pizza. And you know what's coming next, don't you? I did not bottle it. I made a calculated decision. Live TV's the last place you try out new material. 
Anyway, look, guys, I'm really tired and Daniel's bound to wake up in the night, so I'll leave you to it. Good little artist, your daughter. Perfect likeness. But for the afro hair. Ooh, fancy new fridge. Are they finally paying you teachers more than the minimum wage at last? By the way, did I ever tell you my Ireland fridge story? Yes, you saw an old man hitching with a fridge the first time you went to Ireland. You've told that story three times on Tea Time with Trevor. It's a biennial. Ah, so you do watch it then? Well, Nicola's home during the day. Look, if it's on the telly, I'll sit down. Look, I don't mind hearing the anecdote again, all right? I never tire of it, but, you know, maybe tomorrow, yeah? Tonight I'd like to go to bed. Whoa, 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 you're not going anywhere, mate. You and I are going to drink like we drank on the night I failed my finals. Oh, I don't think we have enough Tesco cider. Oh, no, mate, no. I'm strictly amateur these days, no. Relax. We're perfectly capable of drinking and still behaving like responsible adults. You flinched. No, I didn't. You flinched. It's a blink. Bl it's blinked. not the same as... Have a drink. Take the drink, but that was a blink, not a flinch. Out of the way. Oh, it's definitely a flinch. My turn. The thing is, it blink is... OK, I'll flinch then. Yeah. She's not the same as blinking. Well, it's good to have you back. Well, where have I been? Oh, away. You know, when you reached the pinnacle of your academic prowess and failed your finals, you were going to embark on a, an exciting, amazing journey. But, I mean, credit, you, you started it, but... Somewhere along the line, you got lost, and now you are stuck. You're pissed. You're stuck. You need to find something new, you know, extraordinary. Like what? Well, I, well there. See, you, you go on about it often enough. The island hitching fridge thing. Hitchhike round island with a fridge. You what? See, the old Tony, he could have done that. But the new Tony, you, the new t Tony, you couldn't do that. You're wrong about me, Kevin. In fact, I'm willing to make a bet you couldn't. In fact, I will. I'll make a bet with you. You could not hitchhike round island with a fridge. That's the bet. How much? £100, please. What? So you can pay up now. You owe it to Kevin anyway. I don't owe Kevin a hundred pounds. Oh, yes, you do. Unless you're actually going to go to Ireland, buy a fridge, and spend a month hitching. And let's face it, Tony, that's not going to happen, is it? I hear I bet Tony the sum of one hundred pounds that he cannot hitchhike around the circumference of Ireland with a fridge within one calendar month. out there. I told you to use Dean Masterson. It's breach of bloody contract, darling. You said you'd do new material and you did that god-awful thing with a golf club. You need to come over here today and personally apologise to them. Otherwise, I'm going to have to do it and I'm sorry, but you know how bad I am at apologising. I mean, what is it with you? What exactly is it you're looking for? I'll tell you what I'm looking for. A fridge? Yes, I'm looking for a fridge. This is the R2 B52. A lot of people like the R2 range. This is a free frost. A compact and reliable little model. Very popular as a second fridge. Or over here, we've got the stylish GSP 12D50. Uh, it's a bit heavier than I thought it was going to be. Is that the lightest one you sell? Lightest? Why are you going to be moving it around much? You could say that, yes. Excuse me, where do I get the bus to Cavern? 
Go into the shopping centre, go up to the first floor, and then go out the Bridge Street exit. And I never get tired of hearing that terrific song by, uh, by them? By him, by him. So, it's time to go back to the Ulysses Mall now, and uh, Robin Roisin. Roisin, are you there? Yes, Dylan, here I am. Robin Roisin in the Ulysses Shopping Mall in the heart of beautiful Dublin, and the place is, as ever, buzzing. Stay tuned, because we're going to be chatting to some of our shoppers who have formed a huge, excited crowd around us and hearing about some of their favourite plumbing stories. Excuse me, where's the bus station? Oh, it's all happening here. Oh. I believe you had an experience with your septic tank. Roisin? Roisin, are you there? Hello. Hello. Seem to have a few gremlins over there at the uh, at the Ulysses Mall. Um... Roisin, are you there? About that, Dylan. So, Hello? Hello, Ireland! Is anybody there? You could say that, yeah. I just did. Does anyone actually work here? Ah, uh, Pat will be up in a minute. He's down in the cellar. Stock taken. Be up soon, will he? Who? Well, the barman. Pat. 
Ah, right, enough. Ah, oh, Pat. That's not Pat. Pat's got red hair. Yeah, I thought that was Pat. No. Pat's down in the cellar. Stop, Stop taking. Yes, but does he actually know I'm here? Listen, the sooner you learn to relax, the better. Things happen a bit slower round here. Yeah, well, no offence, but it's a bit too slow for me, all right? I'll get a drink from a shop later. Ah, Come on, Ireland. Won't someone have faith in this fridge? I'm only going as far as Carrara Rara. And how far is Carrara Rara? You mean Carrara Clough Narara Ra? Yes, Carrara. There, yes. How far is that? Carrara Clough Narara Ra. About three miles. Three miles? Well, throw your stuff in the back. Yes, it's just sometimes it's best to try and find throw out. Throw them in, throw them in. Yes, but are there any main roads around? Ah, jeez, throw the feckin' stuff in the feckin' back, will ya? What you got there? It's a fridge. Ah, jeez, you wouldn't want to be travelling too long with a fridge now, would ya? So, a uh, busy day ahead? Just going to the cattle market up the road. Are you going to buy a cow? No, just going to kill time. Your dog's very clean. What are you looking at? Thanks! Thanks for dropping me in the worst spot for hitching in the Northern Hemisphere! yourself there fella. You're on a parking dash bar. This is all your fault. If I'd picked a better looking fridge we would have got a lift by now. Hello there. Am I doing something wrong? Do you want to park where my fridge is? I knew it was a fridge. <laughs> Listen, do you want a ride? Are you sure? Hey, looks like rain. Hop in. Well, I'm heading towards... Actually, I don't know where I'm heading. <laughs> 
Well, I can take you as far as Cavern. I'm up there to sell a few toiletries. Anyway, it's better than here. Yeah, put your stuff in the back. My name's Brendan, by the way. Yeah, I'm Tony. Maybe wipe those shoes, yeah, Tony? Fridge. <laughs> I saw you about half an hour ago when I was going the other way towards Kells. And I thought, what is that white thing he's hitching with? A fridge. A fridge. What an item to be hitching with. Yeah, I'm doing it to win a bet. You're kidding me. No, I made it when I was drunk. <laughs> oh, God, the things we do when we're drunk. <laughs> if Mary and I hadn't gotten drunk, we'd never have gotten it together. Is she your wife? Yeah, it's someone else's. Yeah, it was, uh, it was fun, but it lasted. But that's what counts, isn't it? It's like you and your bet. You could have backed out of it, but you didn't. You heard that little voice inside your head telling you to do it. That, my friend, is your intuition. If I hadn't listened to that little voice inside my head, I'd have never gotten into toiletries. Isn't there a main road that'll take us to Kevin? There is. And isn't that quicker? Well, that depends on what way you look at it. The spurs are on this road, that's true. But I think it's quicker because it's more beautiful. Brendan, do you have any plasters with your stuff? These shoes are killing me. I've run out. Toilet trees don't grow on toilet trees, you know. <laughs> I'll see what I have that might work. Oh, yeah. Where'd you couple of these in? Panty pads? Yeah, they give you total freedom. Oh, yeah, for a limited period only. <laughs> We're about to cross the border. I zip in and out of Northern Ireland two or three times on this run. <laughs> a lot easier than it used to be. See the hotel there? That was blown up in the worst of the troubles. My uncle was killed by that bomb. Wrong place, wrong time. Mind you, taught me a very valuable lesson. You might be dead tomorrow, Tony, so make sure you're alive today. Monument? Should be fine here. Looks clean enough. Spoken like a true toiletry salesman. Actually, I'm staying up the road myself later, so if you fancy a pint. Thanks, but I think I'll just get my head down as soon as I can. Well, if you change your mind, it's uh, Doyle's Bar, but if I don't see you, good luck with that crazy adventure of yours. It's a good idea. <laughs> Wouldn't do it myself, mind, but uh, it's a good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Those shoes be muddy. A bit, yes. Well, would you mind taking them off? I spent an age hoovering. And what's that? It's a panty pad. And is that a panty pad as well? Yes. Right. Now, will you be needing the room for just one night? Yeah, just one night, thanks. Is that a fridge you have there? Yes. Right. I'll show you to your room.
Well, can you actually see the screen from the pillow? I wouldn't think so. Well, then why have it there? We needed a telly in each room to get the two stars. And no having sex when I'm not looking. booked a car for Dublin Airport. I did. I'm going home. Well, he's outside for you. Oh, God. I'm glad I caught you. Hey, driver! This man is going nowhere. This is a man of grave national importance. Tony, get out. Come on. Tony, come on. What? I've got the Dylan Daly show on the line. Well, who's Dylan Daly? He's only the best DJ on all island radio, and he loves this kind of wacky shit that you're doing. This morning I had this idea, right? So I gave him a call, told him what you're up to, and they loved it! Dylan wants to have a chat with you. When? No, as soon as this record's finished. Yeah. So let me get this straight. Your name is Tony, you're from England, and you're hitchhiking around Ireland to win a hundred pound bet. That's right. But the difference is, you're doing it with your fridge. Correct. Well, it sounds like a completely purposeless idea, but a damn fine one. Here, Tony, this is exactly the kind of crazy stunt that we at the Dylan Daily Show like to keep track of. So, do you think you could phone us in a couple of days, let us know how you're getting on? Well, I'll, I'll do my best, certainly. That's grand. Good luck to you, Tony. Travelling weather after... This. Listen, Tony, will you stay on the line there just a couple of seconds? I want you to talk to my sidekick, Roisin. She'll be back from the powder room any moment now. Terrible weak bladder, that girl. <laughs> Roisin, I have found the most brilliant character. He's hitchhiking around Ireland with his fridge. I saw him. I saw him, Dylan. When? Remember the outside broadcast that went tits up? Well, it was thanks to that gobshite. There must be some mistake. I'm not a gob child. Uh, uh, that's just, uh, just Roisin's wicked sense of humour there, Tony. You'll have to get used to that. Hi, Tony. Hope you appreciated my little joke there. Now, we'd love to hear more about this fridge hiking adventure of yours. So it'll be time for me to rev up the old radio car and come and find you. Where will you be on Friday? I'm not sure exactly. That doesn't matter, Tony. I'm sure we'll find some way of getting hold of you. Just like we did this morning. So, be prepared. That was brilliant! Well done! <laughs> Dylan Daly. <laughs> Jason, I was just listening to you on the radio there. Ah, hilarious. I was in stitches. The fridge. Ah, you got yourself a lift. Come on. After I heard you on the radio, I was looking out for you both. You and your fridge. <laughs> Can't wait to tell me mates that I got you. Ah, well done. 
Your fair play to you. Hit him with a fridge. It's gas. <laughs> yes, it is. Would you mind looking at the road again now? So, folks, keep an eye out for fridge man Tony Hawks travelling around the country to try and win a bet. You might see him on the side of the road looking confused or trying to get a lift. You might see him leaving a hostel or a bed and breakfast. Apparently, he's wearing a suit, of all things, and, of course, he's pulling a fridge behind him. You can't miss him. He's the biggest idiot in Ireland. Would you mind telling me what you have in your fridge? Stuff, just... Stuff I couldn't fit in my bag. Shoes. Shoes? Nobody keeps shoes in a fridge. I do. Get away. You can't keep shoes in a fridge. Sierra Tango from 626, over. Sierra Tango receiving. Have you asked him, Jimmy? Affirmative. I have asked him. He keeps shoes in his fridge, over. Shoes, is it? Morning, it's shoes. So call me, Dylan Daly, and let me know if you spot that mad fella Tony Hawks, a square man pulling a square fridge. I want to know, is he still wearing that suit? God, I hope not. Speaking of fridges, I had a call from a dicky McCann from Ballyduff. He tells me that he made love to his wife on top of a freezer. They can never go to that supermarket again. <laughs> Gee. Hmm. How much was this bet for? hundred pounds. How much was the fridge? 130. <laughs> Jeez, you're an idiot. What are you drinking? And what's more, you can't leave the fridge down there where you can't see what's going on. Lift her up on the bar stool. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's nice to see it out of context. Morning. Morning. I, I wonder if you could help me. I'm a photographer. I'm trying to take a picture of this lane here. Great lane. Yeah. Would you mind holding up this branch for me? I just want to get some foliage across the top of the frame. Oh, yeah. Foreground interest. Oh, you've done this before. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to need it much higher than that. Hang on. I've just a thing. Yeah, lovely. Lovely. Oh, no. No, it's no good. I'm... I'm going to need you about two foot that way. Yeah, lovely. Keep going, keep going. Perfect. Thanks a million, you can relax now. Oh. I've got what I need. Tony Hawk's looking like a complete arse. What? I'm Rovin Roshan from the Dylan Daily Show on AIR. Oh, I get it. This is all a setup. Where are the hidden cameras? Yeah, it's a setup, all right. It's not for the show. This is revenge. You and your stupid fridge there, you completely messed up my broadcast. In Dublin and in the Ulysses Mall. But it's all right, because now we're even. Because I've made you look like a complete arse as well. You're weird. So, how about an interview for Dylan then? Interview? I'm really not sure about that. I do a lot of TV back in England, I'm pretty well known, and I want to take a rest from that kind of stuff. You're not in hiding then, no? In hiding? I do my research, Tony. That review you got from Maureen Mitchell for the Princess Trust show, oh, she did not like that line about miracles and pizzas. Oh, yeah, no. well, I don't read reviews and I'm not in hiding. Oh, well, if you're not in hiding, then you won't mind doing a live interview. Great. And here's the radio car. So hop in. I oh, will need to find some higher ground just to get a better signal. Don't worry, I'll make sure we'll keep you in the right direction so it'll keep you on track. Hang on, hang on. Hold your horses. I'm supposed to hitch the whole way. If you drive me somewhere, that will be contrary to the terms of the bet that I made with Kevin. I don't want to cheat, so I mustn't accept a lift from anyone I know. Only strangers. OK, Tony, uh, right, look, how about if you took a lift from someone that you thought you didn't know, but it turned out that you did know them after all. And something like that might happen just a little further down this road. There might be a place where in, say, five minutes, something like that might happen. OK, Tony? Hey, dude, you look 
looking for a ride? Well, haul your buns on board. Still feels like a cheat. Oh my God, would you get over this cheating business? Don't be so uptight. I swear to God, you English, you're so up your own arses about this honour thing. You're hitchhiking around Ireland with a feckin' fridge. So tell me, what does this Kevin want? Blood? No, a hundred pounds. He's not a vampire. Hi, Roshi in here. Oh, hi, mate. Shit, really? Okay. Yeah, no, I'll be there. Yeah. Bye. Breaking news. Minister of Health has just had a heart attack and they need the car at the hospital, so I'm going to have to get it to them now. So? Well, I've got to get it back that way, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to drop you here. My dear Kevin, Kevin, you ask. Much to my surprise, I'm beginning to warm to my task. Hitchhiking, I'm finding, is a rather noble pursuit. You set your ego to one side, plop yourself by the side of the road and wait for someone to come along and help you. And you know what? People do, because they're quite nice. And they're intrigued as to what I keep in the fridge. Lots of people have asked me if I have any beers in it, to which I reply, if only there was an extension lead long enough to go all the way round Ireland. I'm eating some gourmet meals, getting some interesting holiday snaps, and the Tony who you said was stuck, well, I've left him behind a tree. Waves, sometimes they come in twos. Sometimes... He's a great man at pulling the Guinnesses, Francie. Nice and slow. That's fine with me. I'm in no hurry. Change the channel there, Francie, will you? This is shite. And now on Tea Time with Trevor. Christ, that's shite as well. Or flop with Bob, our new team captain. Mind you, that fellow's much better than the other Egypt who used to do it. Remember. It's a brave man who flips. This is indeed a special occasion. We hereby name this fridge Saoirse, the Gaelic word for freedom. After all, there is no fridge in the world more free than this one. Hey! May God bless and keep this fridge on her travels around Ireland with her friend Tony. May the local people... You wouldn't believe it, Dylan. The fridge has been christened and blessed. <laughs> Tony, I don't know what you and your fridge are doing to bring all this out of the Irish people, but all I can say is, keep it up. I'm calling in a few days. I can't wait for the next update. Bye. Cheers. He's mad. <laughs> Dear Kevin, this is hell. Recently, I was set upon by some hideous aging art students who got hold of my jacket and turned me into a new superhero. And you, poor devil, are still just plain Kevin. But I am now officially Fridge Man. And just now, I'm enjoying the peace and tranquility that a man with a wife and two kids can only dream of. And the fridge? Well, it's now called Searsha, and it's becoming a work of art. And I'm being pursued by this strange woman. Hop in, sport. I'll take you where you want to go. You're tuned to The Daily Show with Dylan Daly on AIR. And for an update on Tony Hawks, our fridge man, we have Seamus on the line. Seamus, I hear you've spotted him. Oh, too late. I did, Dylan. Uh, when I saw him, I nearly crashed my wife's hand up. <laughs> Excellent hat. You're really quite the master of accents. Irish is your best one, though by some considerable margin. You really want this interview, don't you? No, it's Dylan that wants you. Frankly, I could do without this hassle. You know how to flatter a man. Well, people who've given you a lift, they're all phoning in. 
you've become a popular item. I can see it on my gravestone now. Here lies Tony Hawk's popular item. Well, that doesn't sound good. That isn't good. You have a problem with your transmission? Not good in a radio car. It'll take some sorting too. You'd be lucky to get it back before tomorrow evening. So where will you be staying tonight? I'm sorted. I'm going to stay with friends. What are you going to do? Oh, something will turn up. Well, it might not. There's some music festival in town this weekend. Everywhere will be booked up. It'll be okay. I have faith. Faith in what? Ah, oh, well, that's the only bit I'm not sure of. You know, maybe it's as simple as having faith in the fridge. Faith in a fridge? Thanks a million. Well, it's a crap sausage roll. You can't thank me a million. That leaves you nowhere to go gratitude-wise. It's more of a thanks 82. Thanks 86 at most. Right, well, thanks 86 then. You're very welcome. You know, given that you're a comedian, I expected you to be funnier than you are. Well, I'm saving you money. Huh? I'm a professional comedian. If I'm funny, I have to invoice you. So, are you married? God, no. Please. Live-in boyfriend? Uh -uh. Boyfriend? No. What is this? Twenty feckin' questions. And what about you? Is this relationship with the fridge serious? Is it a gay thing? No, it is not a gay thing. I don't even know what sex it is. I've been travelling on my own for a while. I haven't got that desperate. No, I have no romantic attachments at present. Is that why you're here? What, you mean fleeing some broken romance? Well, I just don't buy this bet thing or running from bad reviews. No, there's got to be more to it than that. Like you're looking for yourself or some spiritual shite like that. Well, actually, there is a reason why I'm here. The same reason you're here with me. And that is? Your radio car shit. I know, I know. I love you too. Okay, I have to go. Bye bye. Bye. Well. All the hotels are full up. What did I tell you? Right, come on. We're going to have to figure out what to do with you, but first. What's that? It's a duck egg. How much is it? What do you want a duck egg for? I don't know, i just like the look of it. How much is it? Don't be so silly. You don't want a duck egg. I do. I, I want to buy this duck egg off you. No, you don't. I do. Now, come on. What would you want with a duck egg? Well, I like the look of it. Never mind about the duck eggs. You should be trying to find a hotel. Something will turn up. No? You couldn't even buy an egg when you wanted to. Yeah, well, I worked out what happened there. Oh. He was a wise man in that deli. He knew I didn't really want a duck egg, so he didn't want to sell it to me. He's there to give people what they want, not what they don't want. And what is it that you want? I want to hitchhike round the island with a fridge. Why? I mean, really? Cut the bullshit. Once there was an old man who wanted to get his fridge home. So he put it down by the side of the road, stuck his thumb out, and had faith that someone would come along and help him. Oh. You too can have faith in the fridge. Yeah. Come on. Still got no, you were right. I don't want your duck egg. But if you could stay anywhere around here, where would you stay? Let me think. Well, there's always Anne Marie's. Oh, my God. Look out for you on the radio. <laughs> well, you've been needing a room. I was fully booked and someone just cancelled on me. It's on the house, of course. Yeah, OK. Now I do have faith in the fridge. And this must be Saoirse. Oh, we heard all about the christening and the blessing. Bring her in. I'll show you to your room. Ready? 
What are you doing? Well, coming for a drink, like we said. Hear that bloke sing. Well, where's Saoirse? Oh, in my room. Ah, it's a Friday night. You can't leave her on her own. Go on. Serious? The eagle has landed. Well, if it isn't the man with the fridge. Have you heard about this fella? What are you drinking? Give him that pint there. Cheers. Cheers. That's yours as well, I'm afraid. Just like to congratulate you. What for? Well, take a look around. Everybody's having a great laugh over you and your fridge. You may not know it, but you're spreading joy. You don't think I'm a bit mad, then? Maybe you're sane, and everybody else is mad. <laughs> Here's your wallet. It's a party trick of mine. Sort of close-up magic. Yeah, it's more close-up theft, isn't it? <laughs> now, what are you having, Rosie? Oh, no, honest, Gobbing, I actually have to go. My friends were expecting me hours ago. Stay. Stay, Roisin. We, we could do some Irish dancing. Look. Jesus. Jake, there's Michael Flatford. No, I think that's proof I have to go. Night, all. Night, all. Night, Tony. I'll see you tomorrow, yeah? Will you? Well, I will if you want me to. Yeah, I, I want you to. I'll call by your dick. Listen, don't drink too much. Well, you already have, so don't drink too much more. Spingo! Huh? Him! Bingo! Winning the West of Ireland Surfing Championships. Hey, surfing! See? No, he's the kind of landlord you want in your local pub. Put it away, Michael. Oh, well, well, you can surf around here. I've always wanted to try surfing. Yeah? Well, I could get you a suit and you could give it a go in the morning. You're going to have to take the fridge with you. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you can't go surfing by yourself and not give the fridge a go. I mean, that wouldn't be fair, would it? I think Michael has a point. If you surf, the fridge surfs. Did you get that up on the board? I suppose so. There you are, then. Right! <laughs> Fellow drinkers of the Strand Public House, attention, please. Tomorrow morning, Bingo and our good friend, Tony will go surfing with the fridge. Ah, thanks. Jesus Christ, it smells like a brewer's mop in here. Look at the stadia. Mm. Come on, mm. come on, mm. shake a leg. Bingo's expecting you at the beach in ten minutes. You're going surfing, remember? Well, you and Saoirse, she's downstairs. She's all ready, she can't wait. No, 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 that was just a drink talking. Yeah, it was. But now you're gonna have the best hangover cure known to man. It's called the Atlantic. <laughs> oh my God, would you look at this. Now, before you make any remarks, can I just say that dignity is overrated? I think you look grand. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. What is the plan, exactly? Well, I think we should wade in, balance the fridge on board, wait for the right breaker and uh, ride her in on a decent wave. Right, well, good luck with that, then. So does she. They're sane. The rest of us are mad. Yeah. 
It appears to be a fridge. A fridge, is it? Will I put that in the report? Not if you want that promotion. Where's that sound coming from? That yours, Tony? No, it's Roisin. Oh. Hello, Roisin's mum. It's Tony, a friend. No, she's not far away. Yeah, I'll give her the message. Important. Yeah. Okay, bye. Kevin, you wouldn't believe it, but the fridge is now a very competent surfer. It was such an uplifting scene. A crowd gathered on the beach. Am I disturbing you? No, I was just thinking. About what? You know, stuff. <laughs> big stuff or little stuff? What do you mean? Well, big stuff like why is there so much conflict in the world? Or little stuff like... I wonder who's taller, Madonna or Princess Anne? Oh. Biggish. Care to share? Not really. No, not just yet. So, this is turning out to be quite some journey. Have you given any thought to how you might like to end it all? End it all? I wasn't thinking of suicide just yet. No, no. End the journey. You could end it with a march or something. A march? Yeah, Dylan and I were thinking of a kind of triumphal entry. Nothing too grand, Caesar enters Rome, that kind of thing. Tony enters Dublin. We could get people to turn up with the domestic appliance of their choice. <laughs> Consider it done. I'll square it with Dylan. How does a one-hour homecoming special sound live from the Ulysses shopping mall? Sounds brilliant. Thanks for everything. Oh, that's nice to be appreciated at last. Well, to use your own words. Thanks a million. Are you planning on kissing me? I think it's a bit early. Well, I don't normally stay out much later than this, so it's good for me. There's a lot you don't know about me. I thought it would be fun finding out. Well, you won't be getting any fun here. Well, at least until you buy me a meal that's worth 40 euro. Well, I think that's in the bag. Tony! Tony, wake up! Why didn't you tell me to ring my mum? Oh, shit. I'm sorry, I forgot. You forgot? I had other things on your mind. She said it was important, didn't she? Yeah, yeah, but maybe give her a call now. I already have. She was calling to tell me that my son was taken to hospital. Son, yes, my son. Kind of important, though obviously not to you. Okay, well, okay, bye bye. Bye. Is he okay? Oh, yeah, he just fell down some stairs, the silly monkey. How old is he? Niall is seven. Seven? Wow. Well, I was young, things happen. Look, Roisin, I'm really sorry about the business with the phone. I'm sorry, I kind of turned on you there. You're a good man, Tony. Right, well, I have to get back to Dublin now, so just give us a call. Will do, and. Drive carefully in that thing. <laughs> By the way, uh, thanks for the most surreal weekend of my life. See you, Roisin. Safe home now. Grand girl, eh? Came right out of the blue, her having a kid and all. Put some fellas off, that kind of baggage. Well, folks, roving Roisin's been called back to Dublin on a special assignment. And don't forget, at Finnegan's The Master Butcher, all this week is their Festival of Offal. 
you can find cheaper offal in Dublin, then you're awfully lucky. <laughs> yeah, well, from your letters, it sounds like you've been having a great time. Yeah, we've been following your progress. It all sounds bloody hilarious. And a triumphal entry on the 24th, eh? Brilliant. Just get your money ready. Yeah, yeah. Of course, the kids haven't eaten for a fortnight, but your money's put by. That's what I like to hear. Listen, Kev, I've got to go. I'm checking out. I'll call you in a couple of days, all right? All right, mate. See ya. Cheers, mate. I don't feckin' believe it. I've been listening to this fella for the last month. What do you mean? I've been listening to him on Dylan Daly. He's been travelling around Ireland with a fridge. With his what? With that thing there. His fridge. His fridge. This is the fella with the fridge. This is the fella off the radio. The fella with the fridge. What the fuck do you mean, fella off the radio? I told you, he's travelling around the country with his fridge. Who are your fridge? So, Tony, are you a bachelor then? I am, yeah. You're not married to your fridge then? No, I'm not married to my fridge. Ah, you'll be fine then. Fine to do what? To enter the Bachelor Festival. Not sure I like the sound of an end to the Bachelor Festival. A guy called Butch runs the hostel. Tell him Brian and Joel sent you. He'll find you a bed. Everywhere else will be full. Bank holiday weekend full of gobshites from Dublin. And don't forget the Bachelor Festival. Yeah, what am I actually meant to do? Just do a bit of a turn. Try and impress the ladies. Do well and you might get to cheat on your fridge. Look, I've told you before, the fridge and I are not together. Oh, don't be so sensitive. Could squeeze an extra bed in, I suppose. There's only six of them in here. Good lads. Won't be until the early hours and be so pissed they'll fall right asleep. Yeah, and start snoring and farting. There is that. Who's that? Karen. She your girlfriend? Nah. Girlfriend left a couple of months after we opened. Couldn't take the pressure. She did take the dog, though, which was a drag. Because I like that dog. There's nothing left of her but that dog house. A shrine to our failed relationship. Would you like to meet her? Well, I... Ah, you're welcome to have a pop. He's a bit of a celebrity. Actually, you do look familiar. He's that Egypt I was telling you about who's bringing a fridge around Ireland. Oh. I'm putting him in with the Dublin boys. Oh, yuck, I. Uh, yeah, you know, Butch, I really don't think I can face that. I tell you, there's no other bed left in the place, unless you want to sleep with me, and I fart worse than they do. Mm. Hold on. There is somewhere else I can sleep. Ta-da! Ah, leave it out. You can't sleep in there. It's just for one night. What's wrong with it? It's perfect. It's waterproof. Secluded location. I'd lay money you wouldn't sleep in there. I bet you 20 cents I do sleep in that doghouse tonight. Well, that seems to be settled then. I'll get the mattress. Yeah, I'll get some blankets. Karen, are you doing anything later? It's just I'm doing a bit of a turn at the Bachelor Festival. You're brave. I always think that performing is like sticking your head in the jaws of a crocodile. Ah, it's easier than people think. I'm sure there'll be a nice crowd. <laughs> about five minutes for you. Sure you're going to use the guitar? I think it's best. I thought I might do this. 
If I had a dollar for e Seriously. The beer's on promotion. They've been drinking since noon. Some of those fellas haven't had a shag since the millennium, you know? This isn't some art center in Surrey. Performing's all about risk. Sticking your head in the jaws of a crocodile. You can stick it up his arse for all the good it's going to do you out there. Why don't you just do that thing you did at the extruded plastic store? Basing store, plastic simp. You were there? I was the DJ. Patrick Quillen, then maybe he'll give it up, huh? Well, anyway now, bachelors and spinsters of this parish, we have a special treat for you. He's a late entry. He's been travelling all around Ireland with his fridge. Probably because nobody else wanted to. But look, anyway, he's been on the Dylan Daly show and everything, right? But we have him here tonight. So, would you please welcome on stage the one and, please God, the only, the fridge fella! Good evening. Um, I'm going to play a song. surprise him any minute. Oh, this is live radio at its best, folks. I'm just about to ring the doorbell of the hostel where he stayed last night. I'm told by Butch, the hostel owner, that Tony actually chose to spend the night in a dark house. It really is more crazy than we thought. Sure, the guy's a mentalist, Roisin, but we always knew that, eh? I'm approaching the doghouse, Dylan. Any second now, I'm going to surprise him. Good morning, Tony. You're live on air! Ah! Jesus Christ! Hang on, hang on. What is it? Roisin, you all right? No, I'm... Do you bastards! What? No, not you! You! Roisin! Right, Dylan! Back to you in the studio, for some music, or travel, or something. Right, yes, okay. Great, um, let's have this. Okay, just played that. Anyone? Which the... Yeah. What is that? That doesn't help me. Okay. Look, Roisin, it's not what you think. Well, I suppose it depends what you think. Come to think of it, it probably is what you think. But the point is... You sloss. Who's she calling a slut? Well, me, I think. Who is this, anyway? It's Roving Roisin from the Dylan Daily Show. What? Have we been on the radio? No, she's just got here. You have just got here, haven't you? Of course I have. As if the nation wants to hear a couple of dogs rotten in a kennel. I am not a dog. Well, then why are you sleeping in a doghouse? Oh, chit. Where do you get off, lady? Hold on. You two are an item, aren't you? Are you joking no, me? You misunderstand, Karen. Yes, you are. I can see the way you're looking at each other. I'm out of here. Hold on a minute. I'm being cast as the villain of the piece. What's the mean of turning up with a radio car and disturbing a man while he's trying to sleep? Sleep? I doubt there was much sleeping going on in there. Faith in the fridge. You're a fraud, Tony. Using your fridge to get attention. Fridge man. It's more like dirty old man. Well, what right have you got to be annoyed? We're not dating. Oh, we know why that is, don't we? What are you talking about? Come off it, Tony. Your face fell the moment you heard I'd a son. You're one of those men who can't stand a woman with baggage. One that's actually lived a life before she met you. Well, do you know what? That's fine. Because I'm not interested in you. And you, yeah. Well, you're certainly not interested in me. So you can carry on and you can do whatever it is you do do in a doghouse with some Aussie tarse. Oi! Kiwi tart. 
Get your facts right. You're a user, Tony. You used your fridge to get this girl, and now you're using our show to revive your flagging career. Oh, oh, so that's how I'd revive a flagging career, isn't it? Of course, go on Irish radio. Well, can I remind you that it's you that's following me? I'm doing as I'm told. Well, you won't need to anymore, because I don't think I want anything more to do with your show. Good! I think you might be in the doghouse. Will you just piss off? Dear Kevin, I've decided to draw a halt to that dreadful media attention I've been getting with all its neurotic, roving reporters. After all, that wasn't what I came here for, was it? And just because I've stopped the radio stuff, that doesn't mean I'm on my own. It's just as much fun as it ever was. It's just one non-stop party. Not far to go now. Victory will soon be mine. And by the way, well done for staying with Nicola for so long. How do you do that? On Ireland Radio. Hello. Can you put me through to Roisin Mulvaney, Dylan Daly Show? Oh, don't go on about it. I did phone. I just bottled it, that's all. Will you do it then? Jeez, there you are. I'm looking all over the place for you. Hi, uh, can I get an urgent message to Dylan Daly? Tell him that Peter called and everything's okay. I've got your man. I'll have him at the start, on time, no problem. Yeah, he'll know. Tell him to call me back. Thanks, bye. What was all that about? And what are you doing all the way down here? Dylan Daly's got half of Ireland out looking for you. He wants to cover your triumphant arrival in Dublin later on this morning. Well, I'm not going to be in Dublin later this morning. You are now. Hang on. Look, you have to go. Dylan Daly's got a huge crowd of people waiting to meet you. I'll drop you at the start, then you lead a procession of people through the streets and end up in the Ulysses shopping mall, where there's a big celebration. What makes you think I want to go? One, the fridge journey is creating a lot of joy, and there isn't a lot of that about. Two, Rushing's name will be mudded AIR if you don't turn up. And three, I nicked your passport just then when I hugged you. If you don't do it, you'll have to stay in Ireland and live with me in a one-bedroom cottage without central heating. So... This is coercion. Ah, that's a very harsh word. I'm afraid to call it, what's the term? Kidnapping. Hang on, you can't kidnap me. Oh, I think I can. No, you can't. If you kidnap me, I lose the bet. Being kidnapped is not the same as hitchhiking. I should know the difference by now. Mm, fair point. Didn't think of that. What can we do about it? Hey, Gringo! When I lived in my mother car. We've finally located the fridge man. He's got his final lift and he's on his way to Dublin. Now, we've got a huge ceremony planned at the Ulysses Centre, where excited crowds are already gathering, but well-wishers are also congregating at the Meeting House Square, the starting point for Tony's triumphal march through the city. Don't forget to take a domestic appliance of your this choice. Traffic is shite. You're never going to make it. Unless you get out and make a run for it. What? Look, Meeting House Square is just right across the river. Well, go on with you. Go, ye idiot, go! We've just heard that the fridge man is here in Dublin. Yes, dear friend, he has come amongst us. Watch out for him and give him a cheer as he proceeds majestically towards the starting point for his triumphal procession through the streets with Sersha, his trusty companion. All police leave has been cancelled as whole areas of the city fall silent. Those not hurrying towards the centre are at home, glued to their radios for this special AIR broadcast. 
Our hand-picked team have been preparing for this broadcast for several hours, and all the technical resources of AIR have been marshaled for one of the most ambitious outside broadcasts ever staged. Can you imagine the scenes of hysterical excitement? Any second now, Tony will walk out into Meeting House Square to join the assembled throng. In association with Finnegan's, the Master Butcher, they'll be pleased to meet you with meat to please you. Is, uh, is that a fridge? It is. Uh, are you Jim? Tony. Oh, I have to meet a Jim somebody. They said something about a fridge. Well, who did? All Ireland Radio. Hi, Tony. Jim here. AIR, a Dylan Daddy show. Got my domestic appliance. You must be Mr. O'Malley. Great, listen, we've got to go. We've got 20 minutes to get to the Ulysses shopping mall before Dylan goes off the air. Come on. Well, well, hold on, hold on. There's no one here. Yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, there'll be a big crowd waiting for you at the other end, okay? It'll be grand. Oh, ah, he's just describing it now as we speak. Here, listen to there. He came across the pond, a young man and his fridge, searching for meaning and purpose in their lives. Now, how are you at running with that fridge? Excuse me, excuse me. You. Oh. And now we take you live to James Conroy, who's on the ground with the man himself. Jimmy? You won't believe it, Dylan. People have come out there thousands to meet the fridge man. It's a fine sight. They're carrying all manner of domestic appliances uh, as, as we march leisurely through the streets of Dublin. Uh, that's all for now, Dylan. We'll talk to you later. It's all great. It's the beauty of radio. So now with this huge parade making its way majestically down Connor Street, we go over to Roving Roisin at the Ulysses Shopping Mall. Roisin? Good morning to you, Dylan. We have a huge crowd awaiting the arrival of Tony. This is his destination, his final port of call. People have travelled from all over Ireland to be here, and the atmosphere is one of high expectation. A feeling of calm before the storm. There's tension in the air. Desperate to hear you seeing Tony. Where is he? And here he is, running towards us. I only wish I could be there with you guys. Hi. Hi. You made it then. Look, I've been thinking. There's some things I want to say to you. Yeah, well, there's some things I'd like to say to you too, but I can't say them on air, and we're on air. No, come on. In these, the last few minutes of his epic journey, what thoughts must be swirling around the fevered brain of Fridgeman Tony Hawks? As Confucius said, a march of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And fair play to Confucius, but he probably didn't have his fridge with him. He might have done, but I don't think so. Tony Hawks has taken a domestic appliance on an odyssey to rival that of Homer. He accepted a fridge-based bet. A frigid air, if you will. And he rose to the challenge, taking the white hood into uncharted territories. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the fridge man has arrived. And it's down to roving Roisin to take us through the final stages of this historic day. Let's have a big cheer for the fridge man! <laughs> Roisin Love, can you get Tony to say a few words there, please? Well, I've realised over the past month of trundling my fridge round Ireland that it's the first time I've ever really been responsible for something or someone else. I've scolded and confided in Saoirse. I've eaten, slept, I've even surfed with Saoirse. And all the time, you good people have entered into the spirit. 
you seem to accept the fact that, in a way, we're all pulling something along behind us. We've all got baggage. But you know what? You don't need to worry about the baggage because it's the baggage handler that counts. Thank you very much for that, Tony. Wise words there from a complete twit. Now, let's not forget this whole absurd trip began as a drunken bet. And Roisin, I believe you have someone there ready to make good on that bet. Indeed we do, Dylan. All the way from London, it's Tony's best friend, Kevin. All right. Uh, Tony, um, I didn't think that you could do this, um, but I'm very pleased to say that today you are a man who no longer needs golf clubs, miracles, babies, or pizza, because you have won yourself 100 pounds. That's great, Kevin, thanks. Now tell us, what happens next? Oh, right, uh, well, obviously a celebratory uh, drinks in order. Um, then it's straight back to the airport. I've booked a seat for the fridge, especially. Uh, first class, of course. At the cost of? 100 pounds, I think. <laughs> One thing remains to bestow upon you the fridge magnet mayoral chain of office. Tony Ireland now pronounces you its honorary fridge man. Well, I've certainly got to hand it to you guys. Talk about Irish blarney. 20 people turn up and you make it sound like the Pope's in town. Very naughty, but very funny too. You know, not so long ago you said it was too early. It's much later now. Yeah, well, it's still not the right moment. Nonsense. I've got a glass of champagne. You've got a glass of champagne. Saoirse's got a glass of champagne. That's not Saoirse anymore. This is a fridge, yeah? Look, Tony, the adventure, it's over, OK? It might come as a surprise to you, but some people are actually back in the real world now. Look, you don't understand. What? But this whole journey won't have meant anything if I'm not able to take what I've learned along the way and translate it into the real world. Just because it's over doesn't mean I have to lose faith in the fridge. Yeah? Well, people who have faith, they believe in miracles. They tend to be really disappointed when they expect the whole world and they end up with, as you said in your act, pizza. Look, Tony, what you said on air, it was, it was really lovely. But no matter how much you like the baggage handler, there is also the matter of the baggage. And in my case, it's my seven-year-old son. And I just don't think you could handle that. Goodbye, Tony. Bye. where you live, is it? On an island that you have to row to and from. Yeah, it is now. Cool, isn't it? Cold, my life. By the way, don't take the motorway. We'll take a lot longer if we don't. Take the river road. It's more beautiful. So I think it's quicker. Who's this one for? Can you make it out to an oil? Certainly. Actually, can you make it out to my mum? Yeah, what's her name? Oh, Sheen. Hi. Hi. 
How is it selling? Better than we thought. So, what are you doing over here? Oh, I'm a mature student. Get away. Well, a student. I just started at uni, doing photography. I'm getting on okay. I won a prize last month. Do you want to see the photo? Yeah. <laughs> You've done well, because that's not the fridge's best side. So you live in London now? Yeah. So you'd be free for a drink then? Oh, Tony, I've got Niall with me. You didn't put absolutely everything in the book, I hope. No, no. I left a few private moments out. Mind you, we could always put them in the film. Film? What film?
frickin' fridge. Never did like it in the first place. <laughs>